This year, I did no lilt February. Thank you. <laughs> I know it sounds impossible, but you take it one day at a time. Did I have any today? No, you're a legend. <laughs> Get hard around the middle of the month, you get the cravings. It's called lilt guilt. You're like, oh, I bloody love the lilt. <laughs> it's the night where you go to the shop at midnight, you kick the doors in, where's the lilt? And they're like, we don't stock it anymore. Like, ah! Oh! So you try and make your own hooch lilt. You know, where you get a pineapple and a grapefruit, and you add in batteries and a horse's head, and you're like, <laughs> it's good, but it's not totally tropical. <laughs> Did that joke in America recently? Turns out they don't have lilt there. <laughs> so, this is it. This is all I do. Imagine if this was your actual. This is. I go like blah blah blah, and you go ah ha 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 money. <laughs> Can't believe I get away with it. You do actual proper London jobs. You know, like like blacksmith. You know, <laughs> farrier. <laughs> Brunch DJ, the big three. <laughs> I tell you, I do not trust people who work in offices. I know, right? What are they doing? <laughs> Nothing takes that long. They're planning something. They must be. <laughs> do you know what you know? Do you ever call in to visit your friend in an office unexpectedly? Everyone just shits themselves. They're like, what's he doing here? <laughs> lie, cover the screen, lie across the spreadsheet, get him out. Kind regards, warm regards, best, best. That's how they talk. I've seen the email. I know what it's like in the real world. Look, sometimes I check in your world. Oh, gross, back to showbiz. And... <laughs> no, I'm very self-aware of the level of fame that I have. I was in a supermarket recently, and an older lady came up to me, and she put her hands on my shoulders, and she said, you are vaguely familiar. And that is it. <laughs> Wrexham, and I was at an ATM machine, and a guy cycled by, and he shouted at me, surprised to see you at an ATM machine. And I've been obsessed with it since then. What did he mean? <laughs> like, on the one hand, is he surprised I don't have a butler to go to the ATM machine for? No, I think it's the opposite. I think I'm surprised you have any money whatsoever <laughs> doing <laughs> keyboard horse shit. <laughs> Here's my, uh, my greatest ever showbiz tale. I did a gig in your Milton Keynes recently, thank you, and I was staying in the Milton Keynes Hilton, and she is the least well-known of all the Hilton sisters. <laughs> and I checked in after the gig at like half 12. Room 303 is where this took place. Uh, open the door, uh, TV on in the room. Not that uncommon in the chain hotels, I guess it's to welcome you, but get this, on the TV, is me playing the shitty keyboard on some show. Immediate thought is like, is this a service they provide to all guests? If so, we, no, it's the realization, this is it. I've arrived. And I waltz into the room, down the little corridor with the loo away to the left. And as the room opens out, there is a fully naked man lying on the bed. <laughs> They've given me the key to someone else's room. But he is lying there, watching me <laughs> on the TV. And he looks up. <laughs> and he sees me. I wish I had the wit to think of something smart. What I say is like, oh, shit, sorry, man. <laughs> and I'd be a legend. I could have been like, oh, are you enjoying this? Ah, no boner. And just walked out of it. 